Hi, I'm Amy Butcherfaro of Floating Food. Uh, Floating Food is part of a network of efforts trying to bring waterborne food transportation to the New York region. So then I'll talk to you about the forces that are driving this work, including our changing food system and the environmental benefits of using our waterways for transportation. There we go. Uh, New Yorkers care about where their food comes from. Increasingly so, we've seen this in the growth of community-supported agriculture, green markets, local bar restaurants, etc. Studies show that this behavior is motivated as much by ideas of social responsibility as it is by health and freshness of the food. Advocates are bringing this into policy, all levels, uh, city, state, federal, Many government institutions will soon be required to source a portion of their food from regional farms. So this brings New York to the precipice of being able to build a regional food system. Something that would be built on reciprocal benefits to the city, the farms, and the region as a whole. Economically, it's farm income and tax revenue that goes back in supporting our city infrastructure. And keeping farms in business does this wonderful byproduct of preserving open space, air quality, and our water supply, as well as food security. But how would this feed into our city? Um, currently, 99% of goods are brought into New York by truck. With more food coming in from the region, we have the opportunity to develop an alternative that alleviates some of New York City's problematic truck traffic. Trucking is a problem because uh, all across the city it contributes to congestion, air pollution, and wear on our aging streets, bridges, and tunnels. The New York City and New York State is also filled with complex route restrictions um, on trucking, and so we have to think about with limited road capacity, how will we serve the growing population of our city? Well, New York's unique geography makes waterborne transportation a viable alternative. Recently, Department of City Planning, Mayor's Office, and City Council have all recognized this, this with plans and policy that call for increased use of our waterways for transportation starting now. Okay. We also have the Hudson River. The uh, Hudson River flows down through eastern New York State into New York Harbor. Um, historically, this river has been used for moving all kinds of goods, including food. Presently, it's used primarily for things that are too difficult to move over the roadways, such as the materials we use to build our city and to fuel our power plants. This is short sea shipping. Um, Short sea shipping is cargo being moved along the coast or through inland waterways, usually within the same country or continent. It's defined by the relatively short distance traveled and represents an alternative to an overland route. It's not a new idea, and in fact is common practice in all parts of the world for many different kinds of things. The U.S. Department of Transportation's America's Marine Highways Program was established to promote short sea shipping here in the U.S. Significantly for New York, um, the eastern seaboard and Hudson River are officially recognized marine highways, and a, re a project in our region, the Hudson River Foodway Corridor, also gained important recognition. But it's not just about getting trucks off the road. How many people here kayak? Okay, good. So you understand how much easier it is to paddle through the water than it is to drag or carry your kayak to the launch site. This is, this is about half of the reason why uh, contributing to the remarkable fuel efficiency of waterborne transportation. Lower emissions are another advantage. Uh, looking at the carbon dioxide comparisons alone, which is the one on the top there, is striking. Also, as new green technologies are rolling out, short sea shipping will become an even cleaner and greener alternative. <coughs> Technology like hybrid vessels and hybrid refrigeration containers, cleaner fuels, higher engine standards, and clean port technology. So what will our marine food highway look like? So there's several models currently under exploration. In a roll-on, roll-off model, you have entire trucks being transported by barge. 
Um, shipping containers or pods provide a different set of possibilities, and food-specific vessels are also under exploration. <coughs> to make any of these truly efficient, you would have to bring something back upstate, right? So, um, the fact that a tug can push two barges almost as easily as one expands the potential for backhaul to things you might not necessarily want on the same barge as your food, like compost, which farms need to replenish their soil. So, also, um, a vessel is going to use a certain amount of energy whether or not it's full of cargo. Um, to visualize this, think uh, about trucks. At about 20 trucks, your fuel efficient compared to trucking. So this is one tow of 20 trucks coming down the river. And at about 40 trucks by current truck prices, which will rise, of course, with rising fuel costs, currently 40 trucks makes it cost effective. So where exactly these trucks are coming from, um, where exactly they're going in the city, exactly how many per day or per week is yet to be quantified. Floating Food did a preliminary survey looking at CSA farms. And the expansion of this research is going to be key to the progress of this project. As you can see already, there's a concentration in the Hudson Valley, which would feed into the river and down into the city. A new system doesn't evolve overnight. But existing farm to city relationships and short sea shipping infrastructure provide us with a place to start. Like the local food movement itself, the movement toward waterborne food transportation will have to actively demonstrate its value to grow participation and investment in new technology. Floating Food is part of an informal task force, um, there's some other people involved, that's meeting to share ideas to push our projects forward. Collaboration is needed for something like this because we need support not just from those immediately using the system, but from public officials on all levels who are creating plans and policy for food systems and for transportation infrastructure. To close, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about love. Because um, this is not just about the economic and social benefits. It's about these things. It's about good food, this apple orchard, the beautiful countryside of upstate New York, the waterways that flow through it and surround our city. Thank you on behalf of myself and everyone working towards this shared vision. If you have thoughts, ideas, um, questions, anything, feel free to email me at uh, floatingfood at gmail.com. Thanks.